Hello everyone, um, I've got a nice question here involving modulus graphs but before I get started I wanted to thank everyone for subscribing. Uh, we've reached 100 subscribers. It's not why I do it but uh, thank you. Um, so with this question, uh, it's a modulus graph and they've said y equals modulus 2x minus 3 plus 1 where x is more than or equal to 0 so you can see here we don't have anything to the left of the y-axis and it says find the coordinates of point A which is that vertex point. Now, I've seen a lot of students try to work this out using a lot of maths and doing kinds of th things but like the point of intersection between these two lines if uh, they were extended. Now, that's a bit overcomplicated. There is a quicker way to do this, and the way I'm going to do this is by making a link towards or link with uh, quadratic graphs. Uh, what I mean by that is if I were to write y equals 2x minus 3 squared plus 1, I'd hope that you'll be able to get the turning point of this very quickly, right? So you should have learned that to get it, you make the inside zero, which gives you three over two, and then comma one. And what I'm going to argue here, and it's, it's a fact, that this vertex point is the same thing. And the reason for that is the fact that the modulus graph gives you a non-negative value, right? It gives you a value that is more than or equal to zero. Same as a square, right? A square gives you a non-negative value. Now, they're not the same thing, but if I want to work out the minimum y value, I have to think about what number I have to substitute in here so that I get the minimum value. And if a square gives you a non-negative value, that means that I want to make the inside zero so that um, basically if, this is, if the inside is zero, I'll be left with a one. That would be the minimum value. I want to add zero to one, basically. Similarly, if I can make the inside zero, that's going to give me the minimum value for y. And consequently, the coordinates of point A are 3 over 2, comma 1. That's it. Okay. The next bit says the graph of y equals kx, where k is any real value, intersects L once. Okay, so we've got this line, y equals kx, where k is any real value. So a way to think about that is we've got this line that goes through the origin, goes to the origin, right? Um... And as k changes, it's going to move like this, right? So it's going to go like this, it's going to go like this, and so on, right? Um, and I'm trying to figure out, if it, whilst this is moving, when will I get one point of intersection? And so in the exam, what I'd recommend doing is using your pen or ruler and just keep moving it to see where there is going to be one point of intersection. Now, currently, there are no points of intersection. And as I keep going and going and going and going and going, I notice that when I go through this vertex point, point A, I have one point of intersection. So that's the first thing I'm going to consider. I'm going to consider plugging in 3 over 2, 1 into this to work out the value of K such that I go through the point A. So let's plug it in. I get 1 is equal to 3 over 2, K. And that gives me K is equal to 2 thirds. So that's one situation. Situation 1 is when I go through the point A. So this is through, this is through point A. Okay, let's keep going. Now, if once I've passed that point, I'm going to have two points of intersection after that, right? You can see here, until I become parallel to this ray. It's called a ray because it's a portion, if it's a half line, it's an, well, yeah, so it's not a full line, so we're gonna call it a ray. And when I'm parallel to that is when my gradient is two because the, the gradients of these two rays are two and minus two. So the next situation is when I'm parallel to the second ray, let's just say second ray. I know it's not really the most formal way of talking about this, but that occurs when k is equal to two. And then let's keep going. Oh, wait a minute, it's not just k equals two. What if my gradient is more than two? Oh, wait, it's still going to be one solution. It's just going to intersect this ray. And that's gonna keep happening as k gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So. I also need to consider k more than 2. So instead of just saying parallel to the second ray, let's change that. Let's just say not only parallel to the second ray, but a gradient steeper than the second ray is going to give me a situation where um, it has one point of intersection. So I also have k more than or equal to 2, right? Now, on purpose, I said x is more than or equal to 0 because 
I can keep making the gradient steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and I'll intersect once. Now, something to consider here is what about if my line is vertical, which is when x is equal to zero? How many solutions do I have? Well, I'll intersect once because that's when, when x is zero, you can see it intersects once. However, it's not in this form, right? x is zero is not in the form y equals kx, where k is any real value. And consequently, we're not going to consider that. So we want these two. So my final solution um, is going to be k equals two thirds or k is more than equal to two. Or if you want to write that in set notation, you would say this. And there we go. Thank you.